In today's video, we are doing a $2,000 gaming console setup for the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. I'm super excited. Last time we did a $1,000 setup for the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. And today we are stepping it up one step further and doing a $2,000 setup. So this is gonna be absolutely insane. And I hope you guys get some fantastic tips from this video. I'm super excited to do this. So let's jump straight into it. So the first place you wanna start with with your setup is a monitor. So with the $2,000 setup, I thought the best place to start would be something like a Samsung Odyssey monitor because they have some of the best specs for that sort of range. So right here, we have a Samsung Odyssey G7 32 inch monitor. Whew, so many things that are amazing about this. I'm pumped, it's pretty massive for this desk. The desk we are using is about 31 inches. So it's gonna be interesting how it all fits in, but we're gonna make it work with the space that we have. That's what it's all about, using the setups with what you have. So yeah, let's unbox this. Woo, it's the funnest part about doing these unboxings is unboxing these things. This thing is massive. I've been super excited to do this as well. I'm mad pumped to be doing this unboxing today for you guys. Really appreciate you guys watching and subscribing. So inside the box, we have all this stuff. This is what it looks like. So we have an installation guide. We have the actual power brick, which is absolutely massive, by the way. We have the actual monitoring mount. We have another ring. This one will go on the back of the monitor. Also this thing, which is the bottom mount. And when we lift this up, we also have something else over here, actually. We have this part, which is another part of the mount. So this is our screen. It is a curved monitor. So that's how that looks. It's interesting to see what we get for about a grand. Overall, this monitor cost about 1100, including delivery, because I got express delivery. I'm just like playing around with this and just miring it. Overall, I think it'll be pretty easy to put this together. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, we have this thing. It's kind of like a windshield. It's like, uh, it goes on the back of the Ferrari and then you're like, mm. The thing that I'm noticing most about all these components is that it's made out of proper metal. So it's very, very, Nicely made and we have this thing which everyone gets confused about this part of it But it's not that confusing. It just had something fall off. So basically with these they separate There we go. They separate and then basically you attach it to the back of the monitor. It's not that difficult Really not that hard and Then that'll just connect the up. Holy crap. Okay. Let's have a look at this power brick. This is massive by the way it's absolutely huge. I think it comes with more than just the power brick. I think it comes with like a HDMI cable as well. Yeah, there you go. Comes with a HDMI cable. The actual power brick, which is nuts. My gosh, this thing is insane in terms of the power brick. That is huge. We also have a quick setup guide, which we shall be using. Look at that beauty. So we got this 32 inch curved screen. Absolutely amazing. At the back there, we have this beautiful design. It has this carbon fiber feel. Absolutely amazing. We have a couple of different outputs there at the bottom. We have dual HDMI, USB output, and multiple USB outputs, the power output. We even have an ethernet port, which is something there as well. We've got the power port. It's quite good. Very, very powerful. All right, so now let's try and ensemble all of these pieces together. Okay, we wanna start with the base and then work our way up. So there's a screw at the bottom there. Basically, we just need to attach this in here and then basically just a normal screwdriver will work with this. It's uh, really easy to put on. Basically, it shows you where the lock and the release mechanism is and that's is it. It is officially on. So there we have the bottom mount officially on. That is super easy. It's pretty good that everything is like kind of already set up for you. It already has the screws in. Everything is really easy. 
there's a part here at the top there that is like a lever and then that attaches at the back here where there is a lever as well. There is a mini attachment part there. So we need to basically, if we put this down flat, it would be a lot easier to do. So once again, we put this monitor down flat and then basically we can put this attachment in and that just slides in because there is a lever. There we go, that just slides in and then you can screw all the screws in. Putting light pressure on, you don't have to do too much with the screws, they're already there and it's super easy to do. And we do the classic double check, make sure that all the screws are fully on. Otherwise, you never know, it could be loose and then it falls off. But overall, that's on pretty tight. And there we have it. Now we have this monitor officially mounted, which is absolutely awesome. And then we have the ability to sort of have that how we like it. We have that mechanism, which is such an upgrade from the last monitor we had. We actually have the ability to swerve this. We can also push it up and down how we like it. It's uh, really well made because of that. So that's something that's really good about the Samsung Odyssey monitors is we have all those options of what we can do with it. We can even angle it different ways. It's really, really nicely built. Really, really good. I just found out that this thing comes off too. At the back here, we also have this thing that just clips on. It sort of just clips in and then we spin it and that's it. That is now clipped in. That's the back part of the monitor. As we can see, so now we have that back panel. What this is, it basically just goes to the back here and you have all your stuff in and then basically that'll just clip in like that. And then you can route all your wires from there and then you have like a clean minimal sort of setup. What's interesting is they really thought about cable management with this monitor. So they have this clip on where you basically clip the cables onto it and then basically that will just go under here in the back there and that's just hidden away so we have clean cable management you can also take this off and now we can run our cables through the back of that which is really cool as well so overall they really thought about doing cable management when building this monitor all right so before even putting this desk together i basically want to explain a couple of things so the first thing is the desk. So this is a 31 inch desk that I found on Amazon. It was about $129. So that will go into the final price of this monitor setup. And then we have the power board, which I bought for the last episode for the $1,000 setup. This thing was only about $66.95. It's got eight outputs, power surge protection, all that stuff. It's fantastic. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, we can now start doing uh, building of the desk setup. This thing is gonna take up like a lot of space. One thing I thought of combating taking up so much space is having some sort of desk riser. This thing I'm hoping will be good. All right, that monitor is heavy. But anyway, let's unbox this. Okay, so, inside this box. what it comes with it's just basically just a monitor riser it's quite small I'm hoping that it will fit but that is quite cool and we also have that extension there which is pretty high tech comes with LED lights and also comes with these side panels and USB outputs as well so that's pretty damn fancy if you ask me that's pretty cool they thought of ergonomics with the side panels that's pretty great also comes with a USB attachment that can just go at the bottom there. Comes with LED lights, all the bells and whistles. Okay, so we have a pretty close fit, but you know what, for today, it's gonna be able to work. So now that we have the monitor riser, we can put a few extra things on the desk and we're not so worried about desk ergonomics with space and all that. Another thing that we could have done was do like a monitor desk arm or something like that to combat this issue, but today we have this, we have this. So for audio purposes, I thought we could do a lot better than just gaming headphones and we could actually get some speakers into our setup for $2,000. So I have these Logitech speakers. They're the G560 speakers. 
They have LED lights, light speed, all these bells, bells and whistles, all that cool stuff. Basically, they came in at 259 and we're gonna unbox them right now. All right, so what comes inside the box is this. Let's check it out. How do I even open this? Let's see if we can actually lift it out. Woohoo! We actually lifted it out. This is uh, a very interesting build video. This is fun. All right, so this is our base speaker. It looks absolutely awesome. Good size as well. Not bad, good size. So this will allow us to have some bass rumbles. It's got a bottom speaker as well as the top speaker as well. We have a couple of different connections. So we have two different connections between the left and the right speaker. We also have an auxiliary input and a micro USB input. I don't know why, but it'll work nonetheless. It's quite interesting. So we got the two speakers with the connections both with left to right tagged on them already, so that's pretty useful. We also have the USB to micro USB input. We also have a Logitech sticker. Hopefully they do a pretty good job for the price, and I would highly recommend these. So they have the L and the R already on the back there, so you can really tell the difference. We have the front speakers with the plus and the minus. At the back there also, we also have these LED lightings. So that's how it's going to connect to the gameplay. So the way this is going to work is we have the L and the R and then you basically attach these connections to the L and the R inputs on the base and then that's how they connect. And then through the base we have this micro USB and I'm wondering if that connects to the actual monitor. We have the L and R right here. So we have the left speaker and we have the L here. So basically that will just attach like that, attach that, and that is officially on. All right, awesome. Now that we have that connected, we can now connect our micro USB. Now for placement, basically it's really easy. You would just wanna put the speakers at the edges of the table. This would be down the bottom, in the middle. Turn on, there we go, we got some lights. So that means we have power. All right, it's all coming together now. Oh man, that's heavier than my student debt. And we have a lot of cables going on at the bottom there. So what I bought was the cable management clips. This came in at only $14. So that's a fantastic thing to get for saving. All right, so this is how we're looking at the back of the monitor right now. So basically we have a bit of cable management, at least a little bit. So we have the power, and two USBs going into here, and then that's coming out the other end. We're using two of these cable management clips or fabric things. And then, yeah, we have all of this sort of cleaned up. So I'm guessing for the other side of the monitor, looks a bit cleaner than originally. It's all cleaned up with all the monitors. So that's pretty good. That's how we're getting on so far. So I'm going to put the PlayStation 5 sort of behind here a little bit. Still fits in, thank God. I was worried about the sort of spacing where we're going to put it all, but we managed to put this on the side here. We've actually got the mount on. I remember last episode someone said, why isn't the mount on the PlayStation 5? It's going to fall off. Well, here it is. And then we can put our Xbox Series X, hopefully on the other side as well. Yeah, there we go. It's so now. We have both consoles on each side. So the first console we can focus on is probably the PlayStation 5 and then we could do with the Xbox Series X. Might as well uh, just push this down a little bit. There we go, you can see my face a little bit more as well. Now, one thing I've just realized is it only has one HDMI out. So that's kind of a shame that we can't do a dual monitoring setup, but it's okay, we'll keep moving. We'll definitely focus on the PlayStation 5 first then, and then move on to the Xbox Series X. So now we can adjust our display area and have it as I like it. And this is our curved monitor. It looks quite nice. Uh, hopefully we can get some audio out of this. I'm not hearing any audio, so there's something wrong with the audio app. So we fixed the audio issue. Basically, I rerouted it to the actual PlayStation and that fixes the whole issue. Should have done that originally, but I didn't think about that. And now we have the lights actually connecting to the game console, as you can see. If you'll actually look, there's the LED lights actually flashing with the console, which is absolutely awesome. These lights are absolutely incredible. I love that. If I was to play like a game, let's, let's see like how it interacts with the game. 
That's what I'm interested about. Let's have a look. Wow, that is so cool how it just sort of interacts with the the PlayStation. That is so cool. Love that. All right, that is absolutely awesome. I definitely highly recommend these sort of speakers for gameplay. They are just absolutely awesome. And you got the bass at the bottom, and then we got the two speakers on the side. For 250, it's pretty good. With our PlayStation, we could also have a few extra accessories as well. So we can do the dual charging station as well. We could also with that have our second controller. I've actually got the camo controller there, which is really cool. And we also have the face plates on the PlayStation 5. So that's really cool. And with that, we could also have the PlayStation 5 media remote as well as another option. Overall, including all these accessories, it will come to $1,979 and 74 cents. So that's under the $2,000 range. So overall, we are under the $2,000 range and we have a new monitor, we have a desk riser, we have these cool LED lights, we have all these accessories. It's fantastic that we can get all this stuff for under $2,000. So that's something cool about this monitor. Now let's go to our Xbox setup. So something that I've just found out about the Xbox is that it doesn't actually connect to these Logitech speakers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take them off the final price because I've tried it out, USB, connection, everything. I've played around with it. There's no audio coming out of it whatsoever because it doesn't connect to the monitor. You need to connect it to the console. So it works with the PlayStation 5, just not the Xbox Series X. So what we're gonna do is just take it off the final price of the whole setup. So basically, what we're going to do instead is have the Xbox wireless headset in the final price. We can use these for audio for our setup, which is fine. You just won't be able to hear anything when we play the Xbox, which is kind of a shame. I, I thought like it would work, but it doesn't work. So just move on and play with the PlayStation, just not the Xbox. We have a couple of accessories to check out for the Xbox setup. So we have the Xbox Elite Series 2. I love how we have this advanced controller for this setup. It looks really, really nice, super nice. We comes with a whole bunch of accessories as well. You could get the Elite Core, but I love the Elite Series 2 for the Xbox. So that comes in at about $249. And with that, you can also get the Xbox Media Remote. This is by PDP. You can also get the charging play kit, which is only like $29. And this one's the actual official Xbox charging play kit. So that's really nice. Really like this one. $29 and you don't have to use batteries for your Xbox setup. So it's a massive plus. Together, so altogether, this Xbox setup would probably cost about $18.94 and 79 cents. So overall, I would definitely say you're probably gonna get a better setup for your PlayStation 5 with this. So that's just it. We're just going to get a better setup with the PlayStation 5 because I didn't know about the speakers not working, which is quite a shame. But overall, still did pretty good for the setup today. Pretty happy with it. If you guys had any speaker recommendations for the Xbox Series X, let me know in the comments down below. You'll help a brother out and I'll help you guys out too. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Really appreciate you guys. I'll see you guys next time.